testimonies, the many battles, and the many things God is doing through me, all the many things I've faced in life, my deliverance from the occult, my healing from cancer, the many battles, many assignments. What does it mean? Who is Pastor James to you as my wife? Because <laughs> why am I saying this? Because many of you have seen many people, oh, uh, some people say daddy and mommy, uh, Pastor James, we want to have a marriage. Like you want to be, uh, someone says, I want a man like Pastor James. What does it mean to be a wife to this man? A wife to my husband. To, to James. James Kawalia. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Pastor James. That's a very good question. But uh, first of all, marriage comes from God. It is prepared by God. And it's God. The first marriage we had was of Adam and Eve in, in the garden of Eden. And up to today, marriage exists. Uh, but it is very wonderful and uh, joyful, I should say, if you get married to a man who is God's choice. God's choice. That is God's will. Because, first of all, uh, let me talk about our experience. If your husband is God's will, you'll be led by God step by step. That's why we must include God in our marriages. That's why God must be the foundation of our marriages. Now, for the case of my husband, first of all, before I met Pastor James, uh, I asked God to get married to a man who served him genuinely. Not for money, not for a show. I didn't want my husband to be a showcase. But I wanted a husband who loved God genuinely. Genuinely. What, I, what, what do I mean? A man who is ready to, to give up everything for God. A man who is ready to surrender his finances for the work of God. A man who is ready to go an extra mile for God. And the most important thing, a man who serves God. And I would also serve with him. And I told God some other things. But God gave me this kind of man I asked for, and I see him in Pastor James. What does it take to be his wife? First of all, it requires me to be a woman of understanding, wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. I'm talking of divine wisdom. Wisdom from above. Wisdom that is of God. Godly wisdom, not wisdom of the world. I assure you, if I did not have divine wisdom in this marriage, we would be no more today. We wow. would be no more today. Wow. Mm. We've gotten silver attacks left, right, center, mm. east and west. Mm. But when these attacks come around, I ask God, what should I do? Mm. How should I handle this? God is a loving father. <laughs> I don't know. I just enjoy my relationship with my God. It is that relationship where he will just come in at the right time. At times he comes in before I've even, you know, called him, before I've telephoned him. He's there. He's always there to guide me. He's always there to <coughs> counsel me. He's always there to, to, to make me a wise woman. I love being a wise wife. Amen. Am I that? Well, you are a wise. So, uh, first of all, what does it take? Not only for me and James, mm. but for any other married woman. You will need wisdom from above. With the wisdom of God, too. I, I, I found Pastor James anointed. Yes, he was an anointed servant of God. Amen. Anointed, I should say. And... I didn't want to see this anointing, you know, just flowing in a funny way or just being put here and there. I even didn't, I don't ever want to see him losing his anointing. It is my pleasure to see him every day having his anointing increase from one level to another. So if I see him getting stagnant, I tell him, Mister, this is not the way I need to see you. I tell him, Mister, uh, I, I see you're going down. You should be at a higher level. When I look in the spirit, I see a man who is supposed to be serving God at a much higher level. You are not <coughs> yet there. So at, at many times I go on my knees to pray for him to get it there, to get it there. 
if we do not pray for our husbands, we can never have them on the right track. So it takes divine wisdom to be Pastor James's wife. It takes prayer. It takes fasting. It takes patience. Patience is required in any man, any other marriage. It takes all of this and even more. <laughs> but those are the major ones. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor, Pastor Juliet. And uh, you, you, you said something that uh, has really uh, resonated in, with me. Most times, for the years we've been married, for the last 10 years, this, is our, this month is our 10th year. Uh, you, you have never asked me how much money do we, do we have. You always, the only question, I, you always tell me sometimes that what has happened to the anointing? At times after ministry, after I've ministered, you come and say, that's not the one I know. What happened today? And uh, sometimes what troubles you, I've seen that most of them, what troubles you is not the money we have or what is on their account. What troubles are those moments you feel I am decreasing in the anointing? And those, what excites Pastor Juliet mostly is when I operate in the anointing, she loves to sit and see the move of God in my life. And I think that is how we have been winning our battles mm -hmm. in the mighty <clears throat> name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was a conversation as we walk through.